Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be a song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle Good morning. Welcome to worship at Leap of Faith Church. I'm Virgie Holbrook. I'm the pastor of the church. I'm so glad that you're here with me this Sunday morning. It's Christmas Eve. Today we're going to be talking about, about looking at the Bible. We're going to be talking about looking at life in a kind of a different way by asking what if. First, first, though, some things you're going to want to know. Our Christmas pageant will premiere on YouTube this evening at 7 o'clock Central Time. Be sure to check it out, especially if you missed it on December 10th here in the sanctuary. We'll be worshiping again in the sanctuary this evening at 11 p.m., the traditional time for a Christmas Eve service. If you're in the Texoma area, I hope that you'll stop by. It will be a lovely service of carols and communion and candlelight and, of course, the Christmas story. I hope you'll regularly check in on Facebook, the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page, to keep up with all that's happening at, at Leap of Faith. Um, you can also subscribe to our email newsletter by texting your email address to 903-821-4505. If you're worshiping on YouTube, please share the service, comment, and subscribe to our Leap of Faith channel. We can chat during the premiere. Your comments are also welcome. If you're worshiping on Facebook, your comments are very welcome. We're grateful, as always, for your financial support of Leap of Faith Church. You can give if, you, uh, if you'd like to do this by texting to give, 903-225-8774. There's a PayPal button that you're welcome to use on our newsletter and on our website. Or you can write a check to Leap of Faith Church, mail it or bring it by 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. For updated information about the church, mylofc.org, or as I mentioned before, the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. So now on this Christmas Eve, now let's worship. We begin with a prayer. As we stand right on the threshold of Christmas, God, we remember that long, long ago when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, you showed your love for us in a way we never imagined. Thank you, God, for loving us in this astonishing way. Remind us to watch Jesus so that he can teach us to love like you do. We're praying in his name. Amen. It will surprise no one to learn that our Bible story today comes from the Gospel according to Luke. It's the second chapter, verses 1 through 20, and this is the way that that story goes. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the house of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they'd seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary 
Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they'd heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. I ask God to bless this reading of God's word. Help me out here. Well, not so much with the flies, although I wish you could help me out with that. But help me out with this. How many alternative ways can you think of to say Merry Christmas? Before we get started on that, let me offer you a word of explanation. During this time of the year, I myself, I'm always glad to hear someone greet me or take leave of me with these words. I love to hear Merry Christmas. I find this traditional, heart, this traditional holiday greeting festive and charming and heartwarming. But not everyone feels the same way I do, and in the spirit of the season, the spirit of welcome and love and acceptance, when I get a sense that I am with someone who might not want to hear me say Merry Christmas, I try to think of other words to convey the, the same, a similar sentiment. Because, of course, there are those of other faith traditions or of no faith tradition. There are those for whom it's a certainty that this Christmas is not going to be a merry one. There are those whose employers have asked them not to make reference to a Christian holiday in their dealings with the public, and I respect that. I know there are folks who think that it's practically heresy not to say the very words Merry Christmas by way of greeting, but frankly, I can't imagine that it really matters to Jesus one way or the other. I think Jesus has bigger fish to fry. So let's play a game. How many alternative ways can you think of to acknowledge the festivity of the season without using the words Merry Christmas? Here's some, here's some possibilities that popped up when I googled alternatives to Merry Christmas. Some of them seem workable to me, others not so much. What if you said Happy Holidays? Happy Holidays would probably work. What about Season's Greetings? That might work too. Good Tidings? Well, maybe. All the best in the days ahead. Uh, those, are, those all seem, seem like pretty good options, but what if you use some of these other greetings I found? Happy Holly Days or Seasons Eatings. Frankly, I find these pretty icky. I just can't imagine saying Happy Holidays to someone with a straight face. While my personal favorite holiday greeting will probably always remain the same, probably always be Merry Christmas, a close second is, I hope you'll be enjoying some rest this time of the year. I know I'm not alone in this. What if you said that to a tired, tired grocery store employee, the frazzled parent of several children, the spouse who's been busy caring for his or her laid-up partner? I hope you'll be enjoying some rest this time of the year. Well, the point of all this is that I got to wondering this past week about what ifs. What if we had other greetings to say at this time of the year? What if we looked at things in a different way? Specifically, what if we looked at the Christmas story in a different way? We heard it just a few minutes ago. It's so familiar and our assumptions about it, they can get to be pretty deep-rooted. But what if we looked at this story in a little bit different way? For example, take Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his own town to register. Most of us have this picture of Mary and Joseph traveling, traveling along alone, struggling to make their way the, the 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem because Caesar Augustus has left them with no choice. The thing is that Mary wasn't required to go on this trip at all. Joseph could have done the whole deal by himself. Only men, just only men, were actually included in the everyone. So why would a woman so near to delivering her very first baby, why would she undertake a trip like this? Well, what if she didn't want to be separated from Joseph? What if the women who'd be likely to help her with the birth had decided that they'd leave Nazareth to go on the trip and Mary wanted to be sure to have them close by? Or what if the women of Nazareth had been giving Mary a hard time about being a single woman with a fishy story about how she came to be pregnant? Maybe, maybe Joseph could, could see he'd be doing them all a favor by getting her out of town. And for that matter, we don't know for sure how far Mary was, how far along in her pregnancy Mary was when she and Joseph left Nazareth. Luke chapter 2 verse 6 just says that while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for the baby to be born. It doesn't say how long they'd been there. 
What if they didn't ride into, into town the afternoon that labor pain started? What if Mary and Joseph had left Nazareth weeks before the impending birth, knowing that travel would be easier sooner rather than later? What if they'd been camping out there in Bethlehem for quite a while, perhaps already comfortably settled in the space that had been found for them in the crowded town? What if they'd been settled in there well before the time when her water broke? What if? I'm not trying to pretty things up. No matter how you slice it, Mary and Joseph, they were in a tough situation, but maybe not quite the situation we sometimes imagine it to be. I'm not saying that the traditional ideas about this story are wrong. I'm just suggesting that asking what if as we read the Bible, especially maybe a familiar story like this one, asking what if with an inquiring mind might lead us to places more interesting, more instructive than reading the Bible with our minds already completely made up. Having now already opened that door as regards the Christmas story specifically in the Bible, generally I'll ask you what it might mean for us, for you, for me, if we started asking what if, if we started asking what if a little more often about our own lives, what if we set aside our preconceived ideas about who we are, about what we're doing, about how we're living life and asked ourselves instead, what if? Instead of saying to ourselves, I could never, what if we said, what if? What if I tried? What if I did it? What if I just went ahead and leapt? Instead of saying to ourselves, I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm unprepared, I'm out of shape. What if we said, what if? What if it turns out to be the one who is uniquely able? What if we set aside our preconceived ideas about who we are, about what we're doing, about what we might be capable of and asked ourselves instead, what if? I know someone who every Christmas purchases a gift for himself, usually something that none of his family members would ever have thought of. Our gift to ourselves this year might be to look at our lives, look at ourselves differently. Our gift to ourselves this Christmas might be to ask what if about our life. This, of course, has potential to be enormously disruptive. Just asking the question, though, well, it doesn't have to turn things teetotally upside down. Maybe it would just give us a slightly different way of looking at them. Like, what if we drew names for family Christmas gifts instead of shopping for each person? What if we gave no presents at all next Christmas? What if we left town for the holiday instead of going to the home place? Or what if we had enchiladas instead of turkey for Christmas dinner? None of these what-ifs would inherently lead to chaos, though one year when Greg and I asked what if we gave our family members virtual animals through contributions to Heifer Project, it did nearly set certain individuals' hair on fire. Asking what if, well, it might equally well lead us to more fulfilling ways of celebrating this holiday, more authentic ways of living our lives, a longed-for change in relationships. Asking what if, it might even lead to a deeper faith. So I invite you to revisit almost the very end of the Bible story we heard this morning, the part where the baby's been born, the shepherds have paid the shepherds have paid a visit, and Joseph almost certainly, though the Bible doesn't say so, is napping. I invite you to revisit what's all what's almost at the very end of the Bible story that we heard this morning. The part where Mary is evidently alone at last to think about all that's happened. The shepherds tend to get all the credit for spreading the word about the new baby and for noisily praising and glorifying God. But think just a moment about Mary. Think about Mary, the young girl whose life has undergone such changes in just nine months' time, sitting by herself there, thinking things over. I can't help but wonder if Mary wasn't asking herself, what if I'd said no? What if I'd said no to that angel? Amen. And now joys and now concerns. Prayers for our world leaders, the leaders of our country, the leaders of our state. Prayers for those who serve in the military of our country, Tyler, Jessica, Colin. Prayers for those who are uh, suffering health-related concerns, Ray, Bill, Mary Ann, Ryan, Monty, James, Christian, Judy, Fidel, Miriam, Pam, Pat, Dwayne, John, Ned, Carol, Steve, Dassey, 
I ask your prayers for Kathy Ashley and the death of her father, James Ashley, this past Sunday. I ask your prayers of celebration and thanksgiving for, um, for Ray McCarthy, who celebrated a uh, birthday on December 21st. Please pray for those who are traveling during the holidays, many of them on the road and in the air. Please pray for teacher assistant Elvira Price, our Parley Parent Early Childhood Center staff member of the week for this week of December 24th. And please pray for Head Start facilitator Eva Hernandez, Parent Early Childhood Center staff member of the week for December 31st. And please be faithful to pray, as always, all who are in ministry here at Leap of Faith Band, including the members of the Ministry Collective and the Leap of Faith Band. Please pray prayers of thanksgiving for the ministry of Brad Nixon and Summer Holbrook, who produce this online service. And now let's pray. God, your Son, our Savior, was born in human flesh. We ask that you renew your church as the body of Christ. We remember that there was no room for your son there in the inn. Protect with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. Christ came as a light shining in the darkness, God. Bring comfort to all who suffer the sadness of our world. The angels sang peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen, God, those who work for peace and justice all over the world. Shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy Give us grace to preach the gospel of God's love for all the world. Strangers found the Holy Family and saw that baby lying in a manger. God bless our homes and all whom we love. At Christ's birth, heaven has come down to earth and earth is raised to heaven. We entrust you, our God, all those who've passed through death and are now living with you. God, when Jesus was born, angels and shepherds worshipped at the manger. Receive the worship we offer in fellowship with Mary and Joseph through him who is your word made flesh, our Savior Jesus Christ, and in whose name we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The prayer I just prayed, I found online, and it was difficult to, um, to give an accurate attribution of it. Um, but I need to say that though I can't say who did write it, it wasn't me. I did find it online, and I found it a moving prayer. And so... Uh, I brought it to you today. And now I remind you of what it is that Leap of Faith Church believes. We embrace the historic confession of the Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed, which goes like this. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And our values statement here at Leap of Faith, it goes like this. Leap of Faith Church recognizes a single class of membership which allows for all persons to be treated equally, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity, with respect to sacramental worship, service, leadership, marriage, and ordination. Thank you again for coming to worship on, on this Christmas Eve Sunday. If I can be helpful to you, if Leap of Faith Church can be helpful to you, please get in touch with me, 903-821-4505. If you'd like to know more, mylofc.org or the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. If you'd like to support ministry here, text to give, 903-225-8774. Use the PayPal button on our newsletter or on our website. There's a donate button on Facebook that might be useful to you as well. Or you can always write a check to Leap of Faith Church, 
Send it or mail it to 5615 North Farm to Market 1417, Sherman, Texas 75092. Thank you for taking time to worship at Leap of Faith this morning. You no doubt have a, a lot going on in the next few days, but take a little time to look at your life, will you? And to just, um, just ask, what if? Now I invite you to stick around for Christmas music from the Leap of Faith band. And when the music ends, go in peace, my friend. Go in peace. Children go where I send thee. How will I send thee? I'm gonna send thee one by one, one poor little bitty baby that was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children go where I send thee. How will I send thee? I'm gonna send thee two by two, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little bitty baby that was born. Children go where I send thee. How will I send thee? I'm gonna send thee three by three. Three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the little baby, baby that was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children go where I send thee. How will I send thee? I'm gonna send thee four by four. Four for the four that stood at the door. Three for the Hebrew children. Two for Paul and Silas. One for the little bitty baby that was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children go where I send thee. How will I send thee? I'm gonna send thee ten by ten. Ten for the ten commandments. Nine for the nine that dress so fine. Eight for the eight that stood at the gate. Seven for the seven that never got heaven. Six for the six that never got fixed. Five for the gospel preachers. Four for the four that stood at the door. Three for the Hebrew children. Two for Paul and Silas. One for the little bitty baby that was born. Born, born in Bethlehem. He was born, born, born in
let's raise our candles and sing together. This is one of my favorite Christmas songs. I hope it will become one of yours too. It's called, There Was a Little Baby. There was a little baby, oh my Lord, there was a little baby, oh my Lord, there was a little baby, oh my Lord, way down in Bethlehem, way down in Bethlehem. They laid him in a manger, oh my Lord, they laid him in a manger, oh my Lord, they laid him in a manger, oh my Lord, way down in Bethlehem, way down in Bethlehem. They named the baby Jesus, oh my Lord, they named the baby Jesus, oh my Lord, they named the baby Jesus, Oh my Lord, way down in Bethlehem, way down in Bethlehem. There was a little baby, Oh my Lord, there was a little baby. Oh my Lord, there was a little baby. Oh my Lord, way down in Bethlehem. 